Hey, it's Craig in the Information Lab, and welcome to video three of my review of some of the new features from Tableau's Devs on Stage session at their TC conference last week in Las Vegas. And in this video, we're going to look at the brand new buffer calculation that um, is going to allow us to do uh, to to expand on the the current spatial capabilities within Tableau Desktop. Um, and, and it's kind of a constant drip that Tableau's be, been having over recent releases of these sort of more advanced spatial features that allow us to keep in the flow with Tableau Desktop without having to reach out into other dedicated spatial tools to do that sort of spatial computation and then get it back into Tableau and then start our analysis all over again. So um, have a look at this this buffer feature. And to do that, we're going to take a look at a, a region of the world that's very personal to me, and it's where I live, which is um, northeast of, in, in the UK uh, in a town called York. So in a data set here, I have a list of hotels um, that exist sort of within the, the, the main area of York. And I'm gonna to switch to um, a sort of interesting background map. Um, on the new maps from uh, Mapbox that came in uh, either last release or a couple of releases ago. And we have sort of all the hotels scattered around uh, around the York, as, as you can see in these these blue dots. And I can maybe make them a bit bigger so you can see a bit better. Now, as well as all the history that York has, um, one of the things it's famous for because of kind of its its layout and, and having um, a, a medieval wall around it is that everything's quite concentrated in in one area and that includes uh, bars and pubs so people love to come visit for history during the day and go out for a meal and a drink in the evening and it got me to wondering um, if you're going to stay at one of these hotels or, or bed and breakfast and you want to have lots of places around you to, to go have a great night out um, that's only, say, 10, 15 minutes walk from your hotel, um, which hotel has the most pubs, the most bars uh, closest to it? So within that sort of 10, 15 minute range. Now, in order to answer this question, I need to figure out uh, a radius around each of these um, hotels and then match up all of the the bars that are within that range. To give you a sort of a visual demonstration of, of what I'm going to do, we're going to look at this, this new buffer calculation. Um, and so let's call this hotel catchment. So the new buffer calculation takes a geometry, in which case it's a, it's a centroid, which is the, the point location of the hotel. Um, I'm gonna go for 0.5 miles around. It's about sort of that 10, 15 minute walk range. And if we hit okay, now I'm gonna just dual access this map Set this back to be automatic and put my hotel catchment on and we'll see we get really big bubbles around each of these hotels. So let's just get rid of the center color and dual that map. And you know, it's, it's a bit um, messy right now, but you can basically get the idea. Here is one hotel in the middle. Let's rearrange that, there we go. Here is one hotel in the middle and its radius around it. Same here, we have one hotel and its radius. So what we need to now do is match all of the bars and pubs that um, exist within each of these, these radiuses. Once we have that, we can count how many uh, fall into each radius of each hotel. We can find out which hotel has the most bars and pubs closest to it. Or the inverse, if you want a quiet night, which hotel has the fewest bars and pubs nearby it. So let's go back and edit the data source. And I've got another data set, which is bars and pubs. So we'll drag that one out. 
I'm going to tidy it up a bit. It's got a whole bunch of stuff in here that I don't actually need. Um, so let's hide those. Let's hide those. And those two. I'll rename this um, bars uh, bar ID. Uh, actually, sorry, let's rename that bar name and this centroid bars. Okay, now to figure out which bars are in the catchment area of which hotel, I'm going to edit the join clause. And basically, I want to recreate that catchment area, that buffer, um, within my, my join clause. Now, I can do that with the join calculation. So exactly the same calculation as before. Uh, we need hotel, 0.5 miles. OK, calculation is valid. And I want to then look up the bars um, centroid and use the intersects feature. Okay, so this is going to return me all of the bars that intersect each catchment area. And what's interesting as well is because it's a it's a regular SQL join, it's going to replicate all those bars for every hotel catchment area. So it'll it'll double count. So one bar could be in many catchment areas, and it'll count. It'll replicate that record for every catchment area it's in. So I'll get a a, a good count at the end. So let's close that. Go off to a new sheet and we'll drag out the um, hotel name. Get rid of this blank. Now there are hotels that are named the same, so chain hotels, but they're actually different properties. So I'm going to make use of the property ID and let's count the number of records. So by the property ID and we find that the Queen's Hotel has 90 um, bars and pubs that are within a 10 minute walk. Um, one of the travel lodges, 87 and so on, all the way down to some which only have um, one or two nearby. We can draw a map of the catchment area of each of those bars. So let's make use of our hotel catchment again. Um, let's strip out the color. And this time, when I do a dual access, I'm going to change this to be um, the bars instead of the hotels. So we have the catchment area based on the, um, the hotels, and then we've got a mark based on the bars. So let's just put that there. We'll change those to circles. So we want to bring the color back in. OK. And let's just put um, a property ID back on there to split them out and make this a dual access. And it all looks a bit messy right now. Um, but if we have a look at a, a, the, on a dashboard, we can, of course, click our Queen's Hotel and we see probably the reason that Queen's Hotel has, um, was it 90? Bars and restaurants, bars and pubs that uh, within a ten minute walk is because it's pretty central in town. Um, and as we move around, we find that you know the ones that have fewer are sort of slightly skewed, slightly off um, the center of town. So th this principal York, for instance, is right next to the um, the rail station. So it's it's about here and it has its own its own restaurant, its own bar in it. Um, but you know it's not capturing as many as you sort of get more into residential areas. And then if you wanted to Go out to somewhere more quiet. I would recommend the Bloomsbury B and B, um, and then you can also sort of move out even further uh, and have one very local quiet bar to have your quiet pint. So that's a use case for um, the the new buffer calculation and how it can not only just be used in uh, in a map or you know in doing your 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 logic within um, your visualization but it can also be used within your 
join um, join logic and as a join calculation in order to get you the data that you want straight out and, and playing with it in Tableau Desktop. Okay, with that, thanks for listening and hopefully you'll enjoy the, uh, the rest of the series and the next um, feature review.